Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Disturbing Truth. The last episodes we spoke about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his progeny and his family, and how they were oppressed and their history. So today we'll be going into looking at who the true enemy of Prophet Muhammad and his family were and are today. Um, and this is something we've spoken about in the past episodes a couple of times. And these enemies have caused so much havoc and they've caused so much poverty on the land and bad conditions, especially for the people in the Arab lands. Mm. And today we're going into this disturbing truth to find out more about the, those enemies. I'm Yasmin Al-Mahdi and I'm here with Sayha Al-Mahdi, Alex Al-Mahdi and Sarah Al-Mahdi. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum So how does the Qa'im, peace be upon him, deal with this issue that's in the Arab world? And um, who is this enemy that we're talking about really? So yeah, I mean, hopefully over the course of this episode, we're going to answer this question because it's very, very important. Um, but, you know, firstly, um, I just want to say, you know, lots of people, they ask this um, one question, um, why doesn't the Mehdi go and um, free Palestine from the occupation? And like, why isn't he doing this? Mm. Um, but, you know, the narrations um, don't really state that that's what the Mehdi um, or the Qaim does. Mm, like exactly. they state basically that he is initially establishing a call and calling people to the truth mm -hmm. and establishing his proofs upon the people. Mm. And, you know, that's how he really starts out. Um, and, you know, the Quran states that God does not send a punishment um, to the, to a people until he sends a warner. Mm -hmm. exactly. And that is what, you know, about us, you know, we know that the punishment has started now. We've mm -hmm. seen like all of these horrific wars and disasters that are happening around the world right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, Abba al-Sadiq from him, his PC has been warning the people mm -hmm. like, for the last 12 years and mm -hmm. he is still warning the people mm -hmm. um, know. of, you know, these punishment, these tribulations that are about to get so much worse. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's really what's happening right now. And, you know, the narration state that um, the Qaim, he has a, a harder time than the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his mm -hmm. family, because, you know, when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family is calling people to Islam, um, the people are worshipping sticks and stones, but when mm -hmm. the Qaim comes, um, they're using the Quran against him. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, his you know, very own book, like his grandfather's very own book. They exactly. Against him. They're, mm -hmm. they're misinterpreting it basically and using the words against him. So, you know, the Muslim lands, um, you know, the lands of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family and the surrounding countries, they're kind of under this occupation mm -hmm. at the moment. So this is what like he's initially dealing with, like these people misinterpreting mm -hmm. Islam Mm. Um, and using the religion against him. Mm. Yeah. So it, basically we see that the Arab land, you're explaining a little bit about how the, the lands of the Arabs are is destroyed. And we see these wars, mm. and the Palestine-Israel uh, war, and now the Lebanon-Israel Lebanon. war, and yeah. mm -hmm. so many others. And we spoke about it previously in our other episodes as well. Yeah. So it's like these two opposing forces, basically, like, you know, the... The Muslim lands which are under occupation um, with the scholars, um, mm. they say that they have this true version of Islam, yet the Mahdi also is saying that he has the true Islam. Mm. Um, but we also have mm. to look at these narrations which, which say, you know, um, in the time of the Mahdi, nothing will remain of Islam except its name, nothing will remain of the Quran except its writing, and the mosques will be empty of gu guidance. guidance. So, you know, what does this... Mm narration actually mean because when we say nothing will remain of islam except its name that means we just have the name we don't have the meaning mm, exactly um so the meaning of islam has been lost mm. you know and the meaning of islam is submission mm. and yeah. so it really means you know this narration if we believe it, it really means that the people like the masses they're going to be submitting they're lacking to submission the to god exactly right? they're lacking in submission to god um you know the religion has been lost mm. if we believe this yeah mm. and if you look around you, you it's clear that you that the nation of is the Muslim nation. They truly aren't in a true submission that they think they're in, on. But because uh, if they were in truly in a submission, they wouldn't be so divided. Exactly, they'd be completely unified if they were unified. in a state submission. Yet the it. neighbor hates mm. neighbor, nation kingdom hates kingdom. There's so many different opinions, like so many people calling to different things and exactly. follow different people. And uh, and all they're doing is just pointing fingers at mm. one another. Even though they all believe in the Prophet Muhammad, yet they all out to kill each other or curse exactly. each other or mm -hmm. think that the other one's damned to hellfire. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Correct. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of see that there are f 
th- this bad things are really happening in the world. And the prophet, he, uh, peace be upon him, his progeny, he warned us of a few dangers, right? Of course, yeah. The the main two warnings that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, warned us about was, number one, the Dajjal. Yeah. Everybody is very well known. Yeah. Of course, every uh, you know, all the scholars are talking about that Dajjal. Yeah. Um, we can see that in our comments, you know. Yeah. But but the the he also says that the even more dangerous fitna yeah. than the, the Dajjal, Dajjal yeah. um, even more dangerous than the army of Yazid that went and killed the family of Muhammad. That's such heavy Um, words, by the way. You know, even worse are the non-working scholars of the end times. So why, you know, you're wondering why... Why would the prophet say that? Yeah, why would would the non-working scholar be more dangerous? Mm -hmm. Because because while the army of Yazid killed the the household of the the holy prophet and the followers... Mm -hmm. um, they killed the body, but the non-working scholars, their entire mission is to completely eliminate the true Islam. Mm, yeah, exactly. So they replaced the true Islam with a fake one, with a false one. And mm. their entire mission, mm. uh, mm. what they working towards yeah. is to eliminate Islam, the true Islam completely, mm. that not even one person in the mm. household believes mm. and supports the truth. Yeah. Therefore, none of the uh, their their entire mission is to make sure that nobody supports the Mahdi when he yeah. comes. Oh, and the yeah. scary part here is actually that that the Dajjal, you you know, he will he's a clear enemy. You can yes. see it. While the non-working scholars, they are are hidden enemies. Wolves they pretend, yes, they pretend they are they are with you and they're guiding you and they're helping you and they make themselves your teacher and you believe them and they are actually tricking you. And this is why this is why they 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 disguise themselves as teachers and mm-hmm. trustees of religion of God mm-hmm. is because they can they can get a hold of anybody who seeking is a true God. believer who's seeking God and completely destroy their soul. Yeah. And and you know even Jesus uh in the gospels he warns his disciples that he says if your hand causes you to sin mm. cut it off mm-hmm. you know and if your eye causes you to sin pluck it out mm. and throw it out because he says that it's more it's better for you mm-hmm. to to enter the kingdom of God without a member mm-hmm. than for your entire body and your soul to be thrown into hellfire. Mm -hmm. So the soul, you know, the soul is the most important thing because that's what keeps you from hellfire Mm -hmm. and they're destroying and poisoning that. That soul, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. It's it's insane. That is why it's more dangerous Mm -hmm. because the body... It's yeah. not as important as the soul. And mm. it's, it's it's insane because if you look around um, and the whole world, how it thinks of Islam, it's uh, it's quite clear how much immense damage these non-working scholars have done. Mm. Mm. They have literally defamed Prophet Muhammad's name. They've dragged it through the mud. People are out there bold enough to make the most disgusting claims against the Holy Prophet and his mm. family. People are out there saying that Islam is the worst thing that's ever happened to this world. Mm. Yeah, um, it's clear, right? We've, we've yeah, heard you it. Hear we've that, heard right? it. And um, like we've been raised in England, myself and you, and you know how it's like. And it's a whole world thing. Like people see them as the and as the worst creation on earth. Like every time somebody hears of the concept of Muslim, the first thing their mind goes to is like this person is going to be out to wanting to do harm mm. them, mm. basically. Mm. Mm. And uh, these are the most backwards creation out there because their scholars are on online, on mm-hmm. videos, on shows, uh, sitting there th- throwing fatwas that are the most in- insane, most crazy, disgusting, mm-hmm. yeah. disgusting uh, fatwas that you can ever imagine come out their mouth. And uh, they uh, use in the name of the prophet to uh, justify that these fatwas are truthful and they make uh, the most disgusting haram into halal, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's weird. It's like they look at these scholars and and people are like, okay, alhamdulillah, I'm not following the scholar that released this fatwa, but but I'm I'm following following the other scholar. scholar. Mm -hmm. 
it's, it's just like, like, uh, what, like it's just basically this mm. uh, weird weird game of like who who's believing in the worst uh, scholar that's mm. why it mm. sounds like to me like who, who's the it's like the it's lesser of two evils the, everyone's evil yeah, basically yeah, They're yeah. Evil. <laughs> they take the best out of the worst god. they choose a personal yeah. god they say well I know what's right and mm. I know what's true mm. yeah. so I'm gonna only follow the one that 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 holds yeah. the most truth that I agree with yes mm -hmm. so this is why you'll see uh you'll understand why most of the role is just looking at Islam and the nations of Islam, so-called so called nations of Islam, mm. as true corrupted lands to the point that like, if you look around, uh, the, if you look into the systems and into these countries closely, you'd see how how much of a failure the system is. Yeah. If it was based on a divine government, mm. like if it yeah. was truly from a, a divine source and a divine man, and these scholars were truly on God's side, then why all this immense corruption across these lands. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Why is this? Is, why is there such insane poverty? Mm. Why is it? Why does every Muslim want to f flee their lands? Like mm. their lands should be the ones people should be running towards. Mm -hmm. They claim that Prophet Muhammad, especially Iran, this dirt, this corrupt government of Iran, mm. who claim that the Mahdi is with them and that they are speaking on his behalf and that mm. they, they are with the Alul Bayt. They and the and the the state of jurisprudence that they follow. Mm. Yeah. You need to understand that this this system it it lacks it's not it's they're godless people mm -hmm. and it's very clear and they claim to speak on Imam Mahdi's uh, tongue and that that he will be we are here because he's going to bring forth a divine just state but. In fact, they've already created their own state with their own government officials, mm. with a leader that is, mm. uh, they make, put him in the role of a uh, authority Mehdi. Mehdi. Yeah. Mm. And they even stated, you know, that, um, you know, these um, first leaders of um, Iran, they stated that like the, the state of Iran is more important than Imam Mehdi. Yeah, yeah. that's so insane. That was right. the yeah. thing. There was, yeah. there was um, a Sistani, yeah. the mm. biggest merja, the biggest scholar for the Shia. He clearly states that Iran mm -hmm. is so much more important than Imam Mahdi that if, if Imam Mahdi poses as a as a threat towards Iran, he would should be killed. And he's not the only one who said that. Yeah. Other scholars said the same. So Iran so is how like can this, they be following? Yeah, Iran yeah. is like this big virus like in the Muslim nations. They're all they're all very corrupt. But Iran has this because they're the most disgusting because they claim to be in the name of yeah. the But yeah the narration state exactly. state if there was three one three true believers then the Mahdi would be there. Yeah, them. which means so that it, because there, there is there is not, you know, it, yeah, basically true if there's three hundred if the narration say there are 313 believers, then obviously they're not coming out of like the whole government and the whole of Iran. Yeah. It, it doesn't, the, basically the figures don't match. Mm. Mm. So they can't claim to be on divinity. So you have just Iran and then the rest of the Arab world, besides the other corrupt uh, governments, you have this uh, abusive system, right? Mm. The the kids, they're lost. You, you, they're meant to be upon a, a religion that's meant to be completed, mm. <laughs> by the mm. way. Mm. Uh, the most knowledgeable, the most knowledgeable uh, of creation w was sent to them. Yet they abuse, they have intense f abuse of children. The, the education system is poor. Mm. The kids are neglected to the point they're beaten, they're they're hit like that's, that's uh, they're traumatized. So yeah. imagine these traumatized individuals that are growing up in these nations. What are they going to end up doing? Mm. So uh, that's why mm. the, there's, there's like these dysfunctional families, the dysfunctional armed forces. The police are mad. Like there is no they don't they don't understand what justice is. I don't think they even understand the true def. They don't even know the definition of humanity. Definitely. The yeah. police forces yeah. in these countries, especially Egypt. Like you'd probably hear, you probably heard of it the way uh, how CC and his uh, government and the, uh, the police force in specific in these countries they're they're inhumane. Mm -hmm. So. And I already mentioned like uh, the concept of mass immigration, right? Mm. And that every Muslim is just dying to flee their country mm -hmm. to what? To the so-called disbelieving nations. They want to take even refuge. Better, yeah, they want to take refuge in the Christian nations, yeah. the nations that they uh, claim that they, they're, they're all going to hellfire, but they seem to be doing a, be a better, a slight better job, clearly, mm. than those who claim to believe in the Prophet Muhammad. Mm. And that's a, yeah. it's sad. Yeah. So you have child labor, your prostitution that's rampant. It's it's mm. insane. What can these women do? What mm. can uh, these drug dealers do? They mm. they have no mm. source of income. They're starving. They're, They're dirty leaders yeah. are 
their their dirty leaders are starving them mm. yeah of their right that um, mm. uh, and also and then you have the scholars at the side don't worry don't worry Allah is a sustainer of all Allah is Allah will give you everything Allah will give you jannah if you if you suffer for the sake of God you know while your leaders get to eat and we get the our money and uh, money, you give you the know, charity to you know insane. and we get to decorate the Kaaba and the and the shrines very beautifully yeah. don't worry I promise you you'll get your hereafter mm. it's, yeah, disgusting. Exactly. it's disgusting it's yeah. disgusting it reminds me it reminds me of that um of that law that they used to do back in the day the catholic church where they used to sell people these golden tickets mm-hmm. where they would like promise them heaven if oh, they buy yeah. them do you remember it's yeah, it wow, has that's like so the bad. same tone yeah, yeah. and then and then you have like okay i spoke about like the poor countries like then you have the rich oil like the ones who like to bleed the earth mm-hmm. from its blood uh, and and are living off its uh, sustenance mm-hmm. and only feeding it to themselves is these gulf states these mm-hmm. really really corrupt gulf states who don't want to help their muslim na- neighbors who claim to be upon islam but don't want to take in the refugees rather have the refugees go into the other nations yeah. mm-hmm. uh, they they have they they are so they're so corrupt like where is god in this yeah no they're so corrupt I, i don't i think you you we need more than this episode to go into like the corruption they, of these the, countries you can't say that these people have god on their side because they they are really not not following the words of god like they can't say this is a godly divine state and and it's following the the religion of the prophet of muhammad it's, it's impossible yeah, it mm. just It just makes sense why Imam Mahdi has to be sent to them. Mm-hmm. That's all yeah. I have to say. And so, you know, these scholars who are calling towards you know, themselves, saying they're an authority on religion, they, like you said, they're doing absolutely nothing, like in the face no, of all of this injustice. They're actually feeding and the tyrant. Actually, yeah, that, I mean, hand actually, hand in the tyrant. They shake hand, the hand of the tyrant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They aid the tyrant. They support the tyrant's laws. That's how disgusting they are. Exactly. You know, so they're actually like... you know they're employed like the the government has like its own like police department um they also have their own like department of scholars basically mm-hmm. calling exactly. towards them and supporting them um and this is like the scholars are like on the front line basically mm-hmm. um and you know exactly like you say they basically called they manipulate the religion they put fear in the hearts of people and they say you know you'll anger god if you go against like the leader mm-hmm. um so you know they're really it's really really disturbing um yeah, it really is you know that it's it's like very strategic and they're um employed basically by the state in order to maintain control over the people to keep them um fear. sedated to keep them passive um to, you know towards the leaders um <laughs> and to, you know they they have these like friday sermons which are basically like the same ones ones parroted um throughout the mosques in like the whole of the countries basically mm. in each country so they have like, like an agenda be, they want yeah, everyone to hear the same exactly, thing wherever they are yeah exactly so it's just to keep people like the in media. this state mm. where they're like completely unable they're like helpless basically they're mm. unable um to do anything and you know the prophet muhammad peace be upon him and his family said if you see the scholars at the doors of kings then what bad scholars and what bad kings and if you see the kings at the doors of scholars then what good scholars and what mm. good kings mm. exactly. you know the scholars can never be calling towards the tyrants you know mm. this is not what the religion is about That's this not is not what, what the prophet does. muhammad peace be upon him and his family said um mm. and this is all that we see in this day and age there's scholars who are at the feet of the rulers mm. um mm. and who are controlled by them mm. yeah. yeah and you know It's it, Imam Ahmed Al Hassan from his piece said a, such a beautiful hadith yeah. or a saying. He said that that and this saying made people just get so they they got so wowed. And and Abu Sadiq from his piece he said about this qu- quote that the Imam said. He said it was like and Abu Sadiq is talking about the Imam. So he's saying it was like he said it and he struck a chord. Yeah. Uh, it was as if it shook the depths of the souls of those who heard it. So this this beautiful hadith that I'm going to read out to you from the imam was what? Have you asked Muhammad and the family of Muhammad about the scholars of the end time? Before you ask the scholars of the end time about Muhammad and the family of Muhammad? That, that hadith really hits you. It's like, wow. It's like he is literally... from 1400 years back that 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 shout he gave with this verse is echoing all the way till now and i hope people hear it like they really need to hear it there was a reason why prophet muhammad was warning us about these things there was a reason why he gave us these narrations because he knew there's a reason why Mm -hmm. allah preserved them for us exactly you know it's it's to warn us and to tell us 
you know, the truth to warn us against the mm. biggest enemies of mm. Islam. Mm. Exactly. You know, and now the entirety of Islam that's taught is to follow the scholars. Exactly. Yes. It's like people have this, um, like they it's just like can't conspiracy. accept anything unless mm. it's been endorsed or approved by a scholar. Like that's just exactly. the mm. craziest thing. But it's like... Kicked out of like exactly, yeah, the you know, Islamic, like, uh, you know... Um, Reddit post. She made a Reddit post, yeah, and they said yeah. that it wasn't approved by a scholar, people, so they kicked her out. So people can only feel safe, you know, if they know that something's mm. approved by a scholar. But these are the opposite of the people. Yeah. Mm. These are the people who it's officially been stated mm. by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family mm. are gonna misguide you. They are the most evil creation mm. under the sky, mm. and we cannot follow them. We have to mm. really think, you know, what makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. exactly, you know, this quote from Ahmed al-Hassan, yeah. like uh, people really need to think about this. Um, because, you know, who are we following right? in this time, yeah. in this such an important time? Because yeah. what he's essentially saying, just to like make it easier for the viewers to understand, he is saying, look at the hadiths of Prophet Muhammad. What does Prophet Muhammad say? He always said, like you mentioned in the beginning, that the scholars would be the ones who are, like you mentioned, actually, the scholars would be uh, one of the two things that would be the worst thing, right? And, and the scholars is worse than the Dajjal. Yes, so, so, so do not ask them for what the Prophet Muhammad and what Ahlul Bayt said about Imam Mahdi. No. Ask first Prophet Muhammad, what they said about the scholars, and you will know, do not listen to them when they preach about Imam al Mahdi. Yeah, and most of the hadiths, even Jesus himself, he warns them, right? Like mm -hmm. he warned in his time the scholars of his time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's exactly at that time, it was yeah. the scholars, it was the Pharisees, it was whatever. You know, one thing that that you notice throughout history, there, there are parallels between the messenger of God comes in a new name mm -hmm. and the scholars come with a new name. Mm -hmm. Every single mm -hmm. time. It was Pharisees in the time of Jesus. His mm -hmm. name was Jesus. Now it's Abai Sadiq. Mm -hmm. And they're called none were... Uh, the scholars, the imams, the shams. Yeah. Maraja, you know. Exactly. The so whoever, mm -hmm. you know, whoever is teaching the religion, they are always the first ones to, to kill and to fight the messenger of God. Mm -hmm. This is... It's this is pattern. In, yes, it's a pattern. For sure. And today, unfortunately, these scholars, what do they say? They they tell the people, oh, you know, it's fine. Everything's going to be okay. Whatever's happening in the world, it's okay. It's going to be fine. And and they at the you same time... You probably deserve this. You know, you, you're a sinner. You know, yeah, you're a bad what? Muslim. You're probably going to go to hellfire. So you're suffering because you're just not getting... I'm I'm getting riches, you know, I'm because I'm so holy. Mm. I'm better than everybody. That's why. But be more like me, you know, just imitate me because okay. I'm such a good servant mm. of Allah. And at the you same know? time, they tell the people, okay, it's fine someone's going to help you at some point God is, is yeah. always merciful exactly, but yeah. then at the same time what do they do they praise the, the companions of the, the the prophet you know back in the day the companions like that lived 1400 years and then that's it they praise them mm -hmm. so so they're ignoring the suffering and the oppression that's happening uh, and everything bad that's going on on this earth and then at the same time if you look at those companions that they talk about if you look at Abu Dhar if you look at Mukhtar, if you look at Salman, all these companions, if they were here and they saw all of this oppression going on in the world, they, allow they wouldn't it. allow it. Mm. They would. The first thing they would do is step out and speak against this against this injustice. Exactly. They would do something about it. Of course, and this is this is why Abay Sadiq is doing exactly that. Mm. Exactly, and that's he why he's following the Sunnah yeah. of the actual real Prophet, exactly. while they yeah. are supporting oppression, supporting the tyrants, supporting. Uh, because you know, the prophets and the messengers, they never said the to wars, the people, yeah. you know, just wait till your afterlife and just endure like while you're on earth. That's not the mm -hmm. message. That's not the message. They all came with justice. They all mm -hmm. came to establish God's rulership mm -hmm. on earth. They weren't just saying, you know, oh, you're suffering, you know, that's just the case, you know, just let Pharaoh. Then why send let, let, let Pharaoh continue to impress, oppress you and, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. just wait for heaven. Like that's not what they said. Mm -hmm. They fought the tyrants yeah. and they established justice and they established God's rule. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, yeah, it couldn't be further from the true message no. of God. And at the same time, what are these scholars really doing? So they tell you, okay, relax, everything's going to be fine. We're not going to help you when you're suffering. But you know what we're going to do? We are going to make sure that 
we have a multi-billion dollar industry and make sure that we get mm-hmm. all the money and you guys those who are rich can have fun and those who are poor can suffer yeah and, and that was <laughs> you your know? destiny yeah that's and that's it saying. you know <laughs> and 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 what do they do they start selling religious props and, and they part- mm. like there's vacation that you can participate religious vacations right and and this is how they get money like look at just look at the pilgrimage what is it people you are know, supposed to go insane. yeah it's insane it's insane, it's insane it's what insane, they've turned right? the muslims into it's so insane like I mean, we can just go into Shiism, right? Yeah, like, but whatever, whether it's Shiism or Sunnism, you go doing Hajj. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to go there. You're supposed to be humble. You shave your head to to like be looking like all Everybody the else. others in there. You're supposed to wear your shroud from from your coffin, right? Because you're reminding yourself of you're dying soon. Your grave, you know, yeah. you're going to your grave soon, and and you're not supposed to see any difference between the people, whether they're rich or poor, or from what nation you're coming from, and and. That's not what's happening here. What's happening is here is you're seeing people taking selfies. I'm at Hajj. I'm in the Kaaba. People uh, having like staying at hotels where they can um, eat all that they can eat. Go to these oh, fancy they're spending restaurants. Ten thousand dollars for one trip, right? And and four thousand. This, this is something. 10, this is something that is obligatory to do as a Muslim. You have to do Hajj once in your life. And imagine if you're poor, you can't even do that. Yeah, you can't even go to visit the that? house of Why God. Why is nobody questioning that? Why? That's actually Why? very disturbing. It's how nobody's disturbing. questioning that it is really disturbing and and it like if you look at the that the t- there's this huge tower they're trying to build a huge tower that just looks like an evil eye looking down at yeah. everyone right and then on top of it, it's like it also reminds me of the tower of babel when they're trying to like build a huge when tower right? to, like, yeah. that reaches god yeah. i'm you gonna know? challenge god yeah, right I mean, now that, look how that, high that, can go. that tower you know the, the clock tower yeah mm-hmm. it's it is above the kaaba and, so, it, looks and like, it was built with that purpose, purpose to right? show that yeah. the guy who built it yeah. was higher than Allah. And it looks like comically evil. Like what what were they even thinking? Right. When they made it? Like, it's it looks just so it's exactly like it. Pictures. But you know, like, but that's yeah. the crazy thing. That's the crazy that's thing. The purpose. Going, yeah, yeah, but the crazy thing about everything that's going on now is they like evil is not afraid to hide to show. itself. Yeah, to so hide <laughs> it's like show. I am out there and you're yeah. gonna do yeah. nothing about it. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because you are yeah. weak. Yeah. yeah. You're weak. Yeah. What are you doing? You know? And you're just yeah. going to continue. And you're going to continue being weak. And, and I'm going to... It's like the... the you're, That's what like, they enjoy. Just they're being laughing. It's, they're mocking face. the people. Yeah. They're mocking it's, the, yeah, the press, is. right? Yeah. So, and, and let's talk also about, about the Shia world, which is also insane. Like you see, what do you do? You see people selling these posters of Ahlul Bayt mm-hmm. and they, they, oh. they, where they're, the Ahlul Bayt pretty, are like being... Pretty posters. Yeah. And, and uh, I feel so good now. I bought Imam Ali's pretty poster. Like that's enough for me to go to sleep now at night. And the worst, the worst are the posters where you see the the family of Prophet Muhammad in Karbala where like they're, they're bleeding and slaughtered and then they use that they use that they make, make people yeah they use that and they make people what cry over it and spill their blood over it and and mm. hit themselves and hit the, their own children and and, and they rather spill it's the a blood crime by Allah, it's a crime right yeah it is and they they, they spill their blood they rather the scholars rather see the Muslims who are weak. Uh, spill their own blood than having to spill the blood yeah. of the tyrant, right? Yeah. It, it's it's because they are on the side of the tyrant. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just yeah. one of those other things like, what, how does that make sense that that's what God wants us to do? Just like hit ourselves and like make yeah. ourselves bleed and injure ourselves. Like, But they convince exactly. them. That's Prophet insanity. Yeah. They convince them. Prophet Muhammad, he never endorsed these. He never invented these practices. The things that they're doing you know, they, they're they crying over the Palestinians being killed, but but they're listening to the non-scholars who are poisoning their minds. They're causing them to act like animals. Exactly. These people, every single year, the Shia, um, they, they beat their chests yeah. like animals. They crawl around. Like, like worms. You know, like worms. They they bathe in mud like pigs. And these these scholars, they're happily endorsing these. They're laughing at them. They're making them do these practices oh, they support on purpose. Them. They support and they're like, them. wow, the more you do they it, the more, uh, more you truly exactly. deserve paradise by acting like this animal. Exactly. Exactly. They're, they're, they're telling them. them. So they convince they're telling them. them. Yes. Yes. They convince that them. it gets them closer to Allah, these practices. These are the things that, animal, that will it, make you closer to God. These oh, these rituals, these, these weird animalistic exactly, behaviors. Exactly, behaving in an animalistic they way. Compl- 
completely sense. like the entirety of religion of Islam, the true religion of Islam is completely it's gone. gone. It's and gone. who does this benefit? Like, well, there's so much suffering going on in the world. Like, exactly. what is the point in right? this kind of behaviors? Like, well, obviously God wants us to help our fellow human being, exactly. not like beat ourselves up. Yeah, like it's just so weird. Like, okay, yeah. someone's dying, someone's starving, and they just start crying and they just start hitting themselves. It's look, I don't know what in their right mind. How can you? I don't know. They've convinced them. They've somehow mm-hmm. convinced them. What like uh, people need to think? What in your right mind do you believe that Imam Al Hussein, peace be upon him, who fought the tyrant Yazid, yeah. who mm-hmm. went out uh, it, despite knowing all the uh, co- like um, uh, what it would have, what it would have, the stakes? What what was yeah. that? What was that? I was on say. Yeah, basically, like his whole family, he. Put out there and they believe that he'll be yes mashallah alhamdulillah the the yeah. shia are, uh, you know they're hurting themselves yeah, over me you exactly. know i'm so happy this is exactly why i my six month old you know was was exactly. was murdered when, in such a savage way right when, i did it all that just so you can just cry for one oh, day exactly. beat yourself up roll in the mud like a pig and then go home and mm-hmm. when imam hussein and his son like Abdullah who was killed they were both killed in Kabul and now both returned in this day and age and they're calling for your support mm, exactly. like support them don't like cry over their like past incarnation mm, yeah. like the way that they died like support them in this incarnation mm. don't be like the people who abandoned at the battle mm. of Kabul yeah no prove yourself prove exactly. yourself if, you, it, if you it's say... something that makes you cry then prove that yeah, you exactly. wouldn't be like those yeah. people exactly so yeah. prove yourself prove that your your stance you said that oh if only I was in the time of Hussein if only mm. I would have supported him I wouldn't I would not have let him down but the time is here. now now, the that time, time is, is now, now to that, support him. That that son is here, and that messenger that God has sent is here. So if you really, if you are a true Shia that you claim to be, mm. then mm. come forth, come mm. forth, and support the man that you're meant to be supporting. Don't just sit and act like animals. Mm. You know where you are. It's insane. Mm. And um, Imam Sadiq, he warned the people about about uh, he did he, he, right. he's he's warned them uh, like severely just as how prophet muhammad has warned them just as, as jesus has warned them just as how any man of god has come forth and fought the people of religion of that time so you also the, it's written in the quran itself you know so imam sadiq specifically says that when the time rises the first to oppose him will be the non-work surprise surprise it's the scholars mm. like yeah. you know it's, it's the always, same history it's, repeat, it's history it's repeating always, itself yeah. To worship someone, the true meaning of that is to obey them. So every time we obey a scholar, we're worshiping them. We're exactly. taking them as God. You know, even even Prophet Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, he said, "Where your heart is, where your treasure is, there will your heart be." Exactly. So if your treasure is in a in listening to a scholar to tell you something that that makes you feel like a good Muslim, then not exactly. And that qaim. Uh, from him is peace is actually the one who is using the words of Ahl Bayt to prove uh, to prove his who he is and and who the real enemy is yeah he's the one that brings right? it to light it's in, it's it's uh, insane that uh, you know majority both Shia and Sunni of course they follow scholars and then you have but there is so many Sunni uh, hadith you know about uh, non-working scholars mm-hmm. it's, it's insane mm-hmm. yet that's like they believe in them the most you know mm-hmm. and like it's like you have uh, a Sunni narration that says beware beware of the trial of the immoral religious scholar Mm-hmm. and that of the ignorant worshipper for both are apparent trials the latter avoids knowledge out of ignorance and the former calls for wrongdoings out of immorality so you see religious scholars are i hope it's very clear yes. like this is your what we are what, satan is a clear enemy for sure but satan mm-hmm. sends these non-working scholars and they're worse because they they hide they're fulfilling mm-hmm. their they hide mission. it as, as in the clothing of religion, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just like how exactly. Iran does. Mm-hmm. Like I Iran, mean, why do you uh, think they yeah, they're so yeah. preoccupied with commenting about about the clothing of the of the Qaim? Mm. Because that's what they care about. You know, this because is what they, this they, is where their treasure is. They they be, they believe that costumes. what makes mm. a prophet a true teacher of Islam mm. is somebody who dresses like one yeah. and and who. Stands on the stage, uh, telling them how good their Islam is and how Islam is the true religion. Mm-hmm. Instead of telling them the truth, look, guys, you guys are astray. Mm-hmm. You killed the Prophet Muhammad and his family. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, even even um, there was there was a dua that was made for them that um, whenever they attacked the 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 family of of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon them. 
you know, uh, there was a dua that was made by an angel that it says that may this this nation of of Muslims never fast another Ra- Ramadan. Mm, exactly. And this dua was actually answered. It yeah. was it was accepted by Allah. So Allah took Ramadan mm. from them. Uh, it it so they've lost track of the months mm. also. Mm-hmm. They're tracks. They're not even. They're not even uh, fasting the true yeah. Ramadan. They're so, breaking fast. You know, during Ramadan, they're not fasting this. Um. So so the the understanding of the Quran was taken from the Muslim country. That's why. That's why there's no uh, true guidance. Yeah. You know, there. That's why. That's why the Prophet Muhammad he said that during the end times there will like the there will be nothing left of the Quran except for its recitation, mm-hmm. yeah. except for its words. So everything, all of Islam was taken from them when they attacked the Prophet mm-hmm. and his holy family. Exactly. So that yeah. that's you know yeah, this yeah, is exactly. why they're they're yeah. they're completely astray and the Islam that they're being taught by these non-working scholars. Mm-hmm. Is it's the fa- it's, yeah, it's completely it's different. It has yes. no trace of true Islam. Yeah, 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 exactly. So you know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family. You know, he warned um, that the scholars there, they're like the Pharisees in the time of Jesus, basically. Mm. So they're you know they're basically exactly the same characters. Yes. Um, and you know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family. He said that um, the Muslims would follow in the footsteps of those who came before you, even if it was into the hole of a lizard. And when he was asked who, he said the Jews and the Christians. So it's clear that basically the Muslims have followed in, in the same footsteps, you know, yep. as the Jews when um, Jesus, peace be upon him, the Messiah came to them um, and they followed the Pharisees, the non-working scholars mm-hmm. um, of the time. And, you know, they're described as idols. Mm. Who deceive people? They're wolves in sheep's mm. clothing, as we said. You know, they like wear like this kind of costume. religious attire. Exactly, they're mm. like wearing a costume to signify, you know, that there's some substance behind them when really it's nothing. They're just mm. here to divert people away from the truth, mm. and they're calling to themselves. They're not they're calling towards the God. They're mm. playing. They're playing the part basically yeah. of mm. the imam. They're like acting, but there's no spirit of God behind them. Mm. There's no exactly. God behind them. Um, so, you know, the narrations, um, they say that the Qaim, um, the Mahdi will destroy these false scholars. Mm. Um, and yeah, there's some narrations stating that he will kill between um, 16,000 and 70,000 scholars in the region between Najaf and Karbala. Mm. So he, the Qaim is seen as having a mission basically yeah. to fight these non-working scholars they, mm. who support the tyrants and they oppress mm. the Muslim population. And so, you know, like you said, Sasha, Islam at that time is so far removed, um, mm. you know, it's... Um, from its true form that is 99% of it will be wrong mm-hmm. um, and that's been confirmed by Abba al-Sadiq from him his peace so you know when the Mehdi comes we know that nothing will remain of Islam except its name so the people they're so far removed from the true Islam that they don't recognize the true Islam of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his family the same religion um, mm. that Abba Asadik from him his peace it. because it's the same mm. religion as the Prophet Muhammad yeah. peace be upon him and his family but they don't it's so foreign to them because they're so used to this false version mm. um, so they fight him yeah. um, they use the Quran against him like the narration state um, which is, you know, it's terrifying because, you know, when people are waiting for this approval they're waiting to, you know, have like the stamp of approval on the truth and the mm. scholars they'll be waiting forever mm. that's the they'll, they'll never part. get the scholars will never like um approve or endorse the truth of the just Messi as the especially. pharisees never approved or endorsed mm. jesus yeah exactly. we can't wait for their approval because mm. it's never going to happen mm. yeah and we'll you be know, waiting you forever. can tell also with the, just by the fact that they're issuing fatwas against the mahdi already they didn't even they they don't like they when you care. hear that the Mahdi is here, you go, you're a true believer, you go and you Best you have a responsibility. If you take the responsibility of leading people to paradise so mm-hmm. seriously, you would be the first one over there kneeling, uh, t- learning from him, making sure that he's true. You would go like, wow, I have a responsibility to my people, to mm-hmm. to these people that care. I teach religion, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, I got to make sure that, that I know that this Mahdi is true. No, mm-hmm. immediately mm-hmm. fatwa. Oh. Mm. He's not. He doesn't. He doesn't come from us. Yeah. So he's the enemy of Islam yeah. because they're so evil. They're both uh, the tyrant and the scholar together. They're so evil. They know that this combination of uh, this power of having authority over the yeah, nation you know, to only wait to control fear, them, yeah, using this fear to control. control people. You know, people exactly. are actually scared to go against what they're told is the truth. They're scared to like mm. think for themselves. They don't have enough faith in their own mm. like intuition in that sense. Mm. So you know, they really have been manipulated, and the, you know, the religion, the true religion. 
religion is something that's so far from them. You know, the narration say that Islam began as something strange and yes. it will return to something strange. Mm. So it's, it's, you know, a lot will change. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. a, lot's, a lot's going to change. Um, and yeah, it's just scary how yeah. misguided the people are right now. For sure. And yeah. one one of the aspects that we know, or to be honest, let's talk about the prophet, what he did. One of the aspects is that he spoke to his wife at one point. There was one narration. It says that he said, if he if Prophet Muhammad had ability to in the life he was in, he, would, he wouldn't um, bring down, he would have brought down the real Kaaba, you know, and reestablished it in its real place. Mm -hmm. So, so this was a kind of a strange narration to hear. But if you think about it, and what you said is, is at this time everything has become so strange, yeah. and that's because one of the things that the Qa'im from his piece revealed was that the Kaaba was in the wrong place. It, it's not where it's supposed to be, and um, the 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 Kaaba of Abraham is placed in the wrong place, and the Kaaba that people today are are praying to is the Kaaba of Bani Umayyah because they had many different Kaabas at that time. Yeah. So even that's just like one of the things that, mm. that the Qa'im would have yeah. revealed that is strange. Yeah. Mm. And so we see there are actually many things that the Qa'im Abu Salaf from his peace has revealed that are different, that, that is different from what people and the non-working scholars have taught us to be, it isn't that way, right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and we just need to understand that, look, uh, the, the, true, the true thing is that supremacy of God, mm -hmm. you have to understand, God is the one who is supreme over all and he's the one who elects leaders. He has chosen Abu Sayyid, peace be upon him, who mm -hmm. is the Mahdi in this day and age, who is written in the holy will. He is the one, he is the true, if you want to say scholar, he is the, mm -hmm. he is the one who will guide you to paradise and guide you to the mm -hmm. right way. That is the, that is He's your right one. way yeah. he's your only salvation mm. is what we're trying yeah. to make clear it's not these non-working scholars mm. let mm. them go investigate our matter and please like please this is about your hereafter please mm. take it seriously exactly. mm. there's only one straight path which is the right path and that is by following the man who's appointed by, by God, God. Mm. Exactly. and you know the men who've been appointed by God throughout history they've always had the enemies of these non-working scholars mm. you know so in this episode we've really established that these are these non-working scholars. They are the enemies of God, and they've turned like the Muslims cannot, into animals. Exactly, mm. we cannot place our hereafter in their hands. And just uh, just like back in the day in the Kaaba, there were uh, idols in there that were broken and had to be taken down. Mm. And so are these exactly. idols today walking exactly. around in the Kaaba and and, and destroying yeah, exactly. people, right? They are these the exactly. walking, so talking, be broken yeah. today. Yeah, and, and for yeah. sure. And that's what the idea is that the Kham is here to do that. So today we've gone through all this, these aspects of, of what has happened to this world today and how bad it looks and, and who is behind it. Who is behind it? It's it's the scholars, the non-working scholars that has allowed the people to um, do religious acts by by my using money to give to the scholars, right? And and the non-working scholars are supporting the tyrants of the of the earth, right? So um, and the only one who would come and change this is the Khaim. He's here to to free everyone, free all those slaves, all the poor people who are not even poor. Whether they're poor or rich, they are people under the claws of the religious scholars. Yeah. And and uh, so today we've gone into this disturbing truth, and uh, we we hope that next time we'll go into another disturbing truth. And I thank you so much for today. Assalamu alaikum.